Mishcon Academy Digital Sessions. A warm welcome, everybody, for this panel discussion on the art of sustainability. I'm Alexander Rhodes. I'm a partner and I head up our business called Mishcon Purpose, which is a sustainability advisory business. Um, I'm also lucky to serve as the chairman of TUSK. Um, <clears throat> TUSK Trust is a UK charity and um, it serves to support the advancement of conservation across Africa. And this year we're happy to, um, to support um, the Tusk Lion Trail and I hope that you may have seen Ian Davenport's amazing um, Kumuro in our hall downstairs. Um, each piece is a collaboration between a corporate sponsor and, a, and, a, and an artist who have poured their love into these pieces to highlight the plight uh, of the lion. And there are uh, fewer than 20,000 animals in the wild today. Those lions, um, or the 27 of them anyway, will be auctioned at, at, at Bonhams uh, on the 9th uh, of November to raise money to support conservation work. And so, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Amanda. And um, thank you all very much for coming, and thank you. Thank you so much, much, Alex, for that warm welcome, and welcome to the panel. I'm delighted to be joined by everyone here today. Um, it seems quite timely, and perhaps a bit belatedly, we're having this discussion. We've obviously had the hiatus of uh, the pandemic to deal with. Um, and we're following on hot from the heels of Art Basel. We're now entering Freeze this week and Freeze Masters in London. And it feels like the art market is actually getting back to business in a recognisable form. So it seems a good time now to evaluate and evaluate and take stock of where the art market is in relation to sustainability. Today, it's a great opportunity for us to share knowledge and practical advice with our um, panellists. Thank you for so much for taking up the time to do this. I'm joined today by Kleena Murphy, who is Global Head of Environmental Sustainability at House & Worth. Mark Evans is the Vice President for Ground Operations Europe at DHL. Gavin Turk is a British artist from Guildford. Of particular relevance to our conversation today is Gavin's use of waste and rubbish in art. So Kleena, can I hand over to you? Um, right, initially. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess thank you so much for that introduction, Amanda. Um, I uh, just wanted to start off by introducing my um, role and position at Hauser mm -hmm. Birth. Um, it is a first for our industry. Um, they're in the contemporary um, uh, commercial gallery world. Um, there hasn't been anybody who's overseen mm -hmm. sustainability previously. Um, but at Hauser & Wirth, we felt quite passionately about um, how we could reduce our emissions and how we could start to build sustainable practices into um, our business and, um, and then further into the DNA of, of what we do. Um, the objectives that we have are to reduce our absolute greenhouse gas emissions by 50% by 2030. So that's in line with the Paris Climate Agreement. Um, and also in line with the Gallery Climate Coalition. And we very, very much want to be steered and work in collaboration with the Gallery Climate Coalition mm -hmm. because um, our industry as a, as a whole needs to make these changes. We are working to sequester more carbon than our total um, footprint each year. And we're also working to reduce our freight, business travel and exhibition construction um, emissions. We've also signed up to the Science-Based Targets Initiative. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a way in which um, organizations can work to um, reduce their emissions um, year on year um, in a tracked way that um, uh, helps align with the Paris Climate Agreement. For a commercial gallery, this is quite a huge undertaking yes. um, yeah. because you need to um, invest heavily in decarbonization, mm -hmm. Um, uh, strategies and you need to look at the whole foundation of the way that the business runs in mm. order to to commit to it so it's a pretty major commitment yes. to have made so then just digging into some of the approaches we're looking at training so within our organization looking at training our staff um, uh, around carbon literacy um, in terms of our um, partnerships so obviously working with um, organizations like gallery climate coalition um, Artists Commit is another organization in New York. Um, Galleries Commit, Art Switch. There's a whole host of these initiatives that, that have um, uh, come about over the past 18 months. And I think it's no coincidence that it's happened during the pandemic. 
it gave people a little bit of a chance and a, and a moment to mm. think about like where are we really headed with this. We're evolving something um, called carbon budgets, which I think in other industries has been um, adopted already. But for the, for our sector, it's really a first, and we're the mm. first commercial gallery to um, embark on that um, exercise with the aim of making significant reductions. Um, looking at um, digital innovation, so a really interesting example of uh, how we've started to do that is um, Art Basel this year, we decided not to print catalogues, but to make a website. Mm. Um, we saved over 17,000 carbon tons through, um, through doing that. Obviously, there are emissions associated with digital technology, but um, from a waste and carbon perspective, we definitely um, made some good changes there. Um, and yeah, so this, this concept of the carbon budget, it's also something that we're trying to um, uh, work with the Gallery Climate Coalition on as well, so that it becomes um, something that other, um, other galleries within the sector um, start to adopt and really thinking about um, like how artworks are shipped um, using sea freight, um, how artworks are packed um, using more sustainable and reusable packing materials is also a huge part of um, what we need to get to and where mm. we need to get to. Thank you, that's a really helpful overview and it, it feeds quite nicely into what Mark's going to talk about in terms of DHL. Yes. Um, and there's some overlap obviously in terms of your, your thought process and how you developed um, the, the practical application mm -hmm. in terms of packaging, transportation yeah. around the art market because you work both in the art market and obviously much wider range of businesses as well. I've been working for DHL Express for 23 years, I know I don't look old enough, and uh, been in logistics for more than 30 years um, and in that time seen a, a, a huge, a huge move probably in the last eight, eight years, seven, eight years uh, to the responsibility of, of large corporations like ours uh, to be doing more and be more sustainable and hopefully uh, from what I'm going to show you, um, you'll, uh, you can see that there is a huge amount of effort going on globally um, to reduce our carbon footprint, which is sizable. Uh, we can't, I'm not going to sit here and deny that we don't have a large carbon footprint. We do. Um, uh, but we do take it very seriously to reduce that carbon footprint. Um, some of the things, are obviously, aeroplanes are extremely pollutant. Mm. Um, and historically, in the freight world, uh, the aeroplanes that we used were, were Boeing 747s. Now, one of the positives, if we can, and there are positives that we can draw from uh, the COVID pandemic, one of those positives was the a reduction in, in passenger volumes and aeroplanes in the sky. And a lot of airlines used that opportunity to retire their aged 747 aeroplanes, which are exceptionally polluting. We had 747 aeroplanes as well, um, but where the, the passenger volume dropped off, our volume uh, increased significantly uh, during that COVID time. So what we've done is we've replaced all of our 747s with Boeing 777s. Boeing 777's fuel burn is significantly uh, um, less than a 747 to the point where um, just in fuel burn savings alone, uh, the, uh, the payback of the, uh, those aeroplanes is over a very, very short period of time. The area that we're really making huge progress, and you can see at the top there, our target by 2030, it's not that far away, mm. is that 60% of our ground transportation will be using green fuels. Our target now is that every new facility that we build um, has to be carbon neutral. Mm -hmm. Lastly, looking at packaging, our packaging is, is, is something that you guys, I'm sure, are interested to hear about. So we're looking at a lot of uh, our deliveries are in, in plastic flyers. Obviously, plastic flyers are are not um, environment friendly at all. So we're, we're putting a lot of effort into finding a new eco flyer, <coughs> uh, some biodegradable, uh, but also still retains the security that our customers are looking for. Mm -hmm. Something that um, probably isn't an obvious one is, uh, is, is reusable pallet wrap. Now pallet wrap, if you think about the amount of pallets that are moved around the world globally, and they're all wrapped in this clear sticky plastic mm -hmm. that goes around the pallet. Now, again, none of that is biodegradable. Um, with these, um, we can use these more than 100 times each. Uh, uh, we have a Bluetooth chip in each of these pallet wraps, uh, and it actually can um, connect to Wi-Fi, 
uh, and actually give live updates of where these shipments are as oh, well. So there's lots of other things that we're working on, mm. but I just thought that I'd give you a little uh, idea of what uh, some of the things that, uh, that we're working on. Gavin, can we hand over to you um, and to get the, an artist's perspective? You know, I think that the idea of art and the importance of art is, is central. The importance of storytelling and narrative and, and, and communication and, and how that happens is sort of central to the process of art. I think it's part of our, our, our moving and, and rich culture. So art itself is going to be part of the solution to this problem that we're in. But art really, again, is, is sort of built around a process of individualism and, and about consumerism. And, uh, and both these things, individualism and consum consumerism, or capitalism even, dare I say it, um, essentially, like where they go and where they take us to is, is in a way a place where, where we sort of revolve around the idea of waste. We, we're, we're basically, we're addicted to and we're and we're controlled by, and we're, we're now even more controlled by it because we realise that ultimately that's um, the number one challenge that, that we have to face as a species. Sat on the panel here, I suddenly was like, wh wh why am I here? Well, I'm here obviously because of my involvement with Tusk, a, ch a charity, um, NGO charity, which has been set up to try and save the lions, try and save, try and save big mammals. You know, it's, it's terrifying that big mammals need us to say, you know, need us sitting here, saving them in this way. Mm -hmm. um, the irony obviously is that, that, you know, us artists have created painted plastic lions um, in order to do it. Um, so in a way, we're, we're kind of trying to solve something, but we're creating problems in the process of, of solving it. Um, and I think that, that you know, this is, this is in this sense quite obvious, but, you know, and also we, moving the lions all over the world as well. Um, and also, actually, you know, what we're doing is we're actually, we're actually giving support structure to wardens in Africa to kind of police, uh, to police these areas to make sure that poachers and various other people don't come and kill, the, kill these mammals. You know, I'm, I'm pleased to do it, but it's, it, it's full of, it's full of complications for me. Uh, some artists address issues to do with environment and sustainability. Yeah. For those that don't within their practice, um, it's obviously a bit of a different conversation because they've got to address methods of production in terms of mm. sustainability, but they're not actually commenting upon it. They're not um, a sort of a, mm. a commentating voice. It's a slightly different yeah. position, isn't it? And you obviously also work with a lot of artists as well. Um, what are your, both your experiences in terms of that, in terms of artist engagement and where they want to take it? I mean, I think um, <clears throat> there's like two ways to look at it. Mm. There are um, artists that want to in, engage in environmentalism and, um, and, and that's what their practice is about. Mm. Um, but I think we have to also be careful not to be um, prescriptive around mm. that. and. Um, n a number of the artists that we work with at uh, the gallery are thinking about exhibition practices mm. and the way in which um, they go about making their work and presenting their work um, that has a more sustainable focus. Kind of, I guess we're starting to help artists mm. figure out yeah, how to it. like do this. And, and I guess that's one of the Parts of my job at Hauser and Firth is to try and help artists also navigate this. Yeah, it's super important because it's very difficult for artists essentially to have the kind of the wherewithal to understand exactly how to properly offset, you know, the carbon emissions that they're making. And I think if the galleries and, and also if the transport companies can offer immediately offer artists alternatives and ways of doing things, if they can say, oh, I've got a way of packing this, which, which is going to which is going to save you money and also save the, save the planet a little bit. <laughs> um, you know, th this is really good. This is really functional. This is mm. really the, system, the gallery system working well mm. it, it, under these terms. Mm. I think it's, it's about education, isn't it? And, Definitely. And, and about how, how we can all educate ourselves in this area. Do you think 
obviously we're, we're talking with the the art calendar is punctuated by a series of art fairs and we've got freeze that's a, a traditional way or has been over the last say 15 20 years of selling art or enabling art to be seen and it involves the international transportation of artworks people collectors buyers and they travel around to certain locations. Do you think that will change given that we have this pause, this moment of reflection? I mean, we're already seeing a change. Mm. Um, I think that there's um, the, the element of the hybrid, like this event in a mm. way, um, that the digital realm is, um, I mean, definitely I'm speaking on behalf of our gallery. Um, mm we're using that in a much more strategic way than we would have previously um, and uh, sales will happen online in a way that they and in a sophisticated way in a way that they wouldn't have previously. In terms of the gallery, can I ask about the um, Gallery Climate Coalition because um, you, you're both involved aren't you um, Kleena and also Gavin yeah. just about its evolution. There are about 550 members aren't there, are, are they all uh, commercial galleries, gallerists that are involved? Yeah, so um, it's set up for commercial galleries, yeah. um, for auction houses. Um, and I guess you said in your introduction, mm. um, the, um, the public sector has had um, industry bodies mm. behind them for many years to try and um, look at this topic, whereas commercial galleries have been pretty um, freewheeling when it comes to all of this. Mm. So that's why the Gallery Climate Coalition was set up to, in order to try and create some uh, guidelines and structures around how, um, how galleries could start to reduce their carbon emissions and look at their waste. Yeah. Um, so there's chapters in London, um, LA, Berlin and Milan at the moment. Mm. And they're at freeze. Yeah, so they're yeah. freeze. So that's interesting. So it's a way of knowledge sharing which sort of transcends sort of various galleries developing their own strategy, is that right? Yeah, and I yeah. think it, it really um, goes against this idea of competition as well, because, yeah. um, you know, and commercial galleries are all competitive with one another, and I think what's been great about Gallery Climate Coalition is that it's that's, that's not what this is about. That's about us sharing information and how we can do things better together as a whole industry, because if we don't do it together, we won't be able to do it. Thank you ever so much to all our panellists. Thank you much, Kleena. Thanks, Mark. Thank you much, Gavin. Um, thanks so much to Alex as well. Um, and to our audience for attending. Thank you. Thanks. The Mishcon Academy Digital Sessions. To access advice for businesses that is regularly updated, please visit mishcon.com.